Gavin, welcome to the Health Path podcast. It's been, I think, about four years since we last spoke, and it it really doesn't feel like it. <laughs> no, it's scary, actually, Alex. Yeah. Uh, well, thanks for having me back again. It's um, but I think it must be because it was definitely pre-COVID, um, and lots happened since then. Time flies, doesn't it? It does. Yeah, and I think you know, especially with those lockdowns, days just did merge into one long day. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's- yeah. But um, obviously, we're going to be chatting around heart math today, mm-hmm. which I think I said off air is is arguably one of the more important conversations we've had on the podcast, because I just think we can get in a bit of a rut whereby we become very analytical when we're trying to improve our health and we can get stuck in our heads and we forget that we have bodies and that we can listen to some of the messages and signals that come from components of our bodies, such as the heart, which will be yeah. one of the, the topics of today. But before we dive into heart math and what it is and um, how it works, are you happy just to share a little bit about um, you and, and your background and how you got involved? Oh, blimey. OK. All right. Yeah. Well, it's a fairly unusual story. So I've, my background really is nothing to do with any of this. So I've got background in, in media. I used to work in the newspaper industry for for a long time, um, but my the reason I'm in this industry now is actually as as, as a result of a of, of a life event basically actually. So I was sort of yeah in the corporate world just doing my thing, not really know why I was doing it, a bit lost, certainly very stressed in those times as well. And um, I uh, I was married and actually lost my first wife to breast cancer, and it was one of those sort of life changing events, crucible moments which forces you often to wake up you know and um so I was uh, you know I went through that process I was grieving and I was trying to work out actually who I was and what was important in my life um and uh I still don't really know why but I went off and I did a master's degree I did business master's and MBA and um when I was doing that I, I I came across the whole field of leadership um, but particularly, I was lucky with the MBA I did. It was really focused on self-leadership. So we were looking at things like emotional intelligence and authentic leadership, values-based leadership, that type of thing. And um, what I realized pretty quickly was um, I didn't really know who I was um, and what I was doing with my life. I just discovered rather painfully what was important to me, um, but was still a bit lost with regards to kind of what I might do with my life going forwards. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, all this stuff really resonated with me. And it was at that time then that I discovered heart math. It just appeared in my life, you know, synchronistically at a time when I really needed something like that. And what I realized was I hadn't been living my life from my heart up until that point. And, and actually for a period after losing my first wife, I'd kind of closed my heart down to, to deal with it basically, which, which I think, you know, was appropriate at the time, but a year and a half, two years later, sort of trying to emerge back into life what I realized was I need to try and connect with who I really am and and, and what's important what I want to do with my life so that was my introduction to heart map actually was through through that route I adopted it myself as a practice Um, I really loved the fact that there was some technology uh, because for me that sort of validated all of this stuff and I loved the fact that I could measure some of the things I was doing the techniques I was practicing and um, it worked for me very quickly, Alex. And then, and then, and then, because it worked for me, and I then started to use it in my work. I moved then into leadership and management training and consulting, that type of thing. And I started to to gently bring it in, share with others to begin with, and they were always intrigued and really enjoyed it. Um, and so, really, then that was the journey into into getting involved properly with Heart Math as an organisation. And then, fast forward a few more years, actually becoming. The lucky guy that represents heart math in the uk and ireland so there's a very quick background to sort of how i where i came from and how i got into all of this okay well thank you for sharing um and i guess the the na- the next organic question is what is heart math <laughs> <laughs> so yes it's a great question and um and and, and not necessarily the easiest one to answer because it's many <laughs> things look it's a system basically at the end of the day and it's a system that includes uh, various aspects it includes breath work lots of people are into breath work at the moment seems to have exploded in the last few years so there's aspects of breath work a particular type of breath work or coherence breath work or resonance breath work um there's an aspect to it which is actually uh focusing on the heart so what we're calling interoception you spoke earlier about recognizing what's going on in the body and information from the body well you know the heart is a very important part of the body it contains a lot of information and many people aren't 
connected to that problem. Many people aren't connected, you know, here basically. But um, so part of it is about is is about nurturing a, a kind of connection to your physical heart. So noticing what's going on there. But there's also a, a sort of metaphorical part to that as well, or an even esoteric part, which is connecting to the heart of who you really are. Yeah. Um, so that's an important part of the system. Another part of the system is the ability to self-regulate. So particularly your, your emotions and your feelings and recognizing that emotions and feelings are reactions. That's important. But emotions and feelings can also be choices. And so exercising that choice to feel gratitude or appreciation or focus on, you know, care and love, those types of positive, nurturing, pleasant emotions and feelings. And then the cool bit that's, that's really, I guess, the heart, the heart, the bit that HeartMath invented, if you like, is the is the biofeedback technology. So there's a gadget looks like this that uh, you basically pop on your ear and it and it's measuring through the, the blood supply in the earlobe. It's actually measuring your heart rhythms. And what we know is that when you get yourself into this state called coherence, uh, you can measure it through your heart rhythms. You can measure degrees of coherence. And so the biofeedback, particularly for people that need validation, credibility, like to measure stuff, like to know they're getting better at it, then the technology is a really valuable part of the system as well. But ultimately, the most important bit is is the breath work and the emotional regulation, heart connection side of things. The, the the tech is just a way of like training your ability to do that on demand. Right. Okay. So that's, I guess, a really important piece because you know it's um, there are specific exercises, aren't there, that you can be taught. Some that you can do in the moment. So if you're <laughs> in a stressful situation, you can go through that process. Um, but I guess the way that I've always sort of at least envisioned it is you can also just kind of you know do this sitting in bed or on the couch with the tech as a way to cultivate that coherence definitely yeah so you're right the techniques are actually designed to be used in the moment that you need them so when you're you are experiencing a stressful situation whatever that might be you can do it there and then eyes open um but then also the technology piece is important in terms of, of how you practice and strengthen your ability to do that sort of when you don't need it, if you see what I mean. So, to, you know, to use the exercise analogy, if you if you want to run a 10K, you know, but you haven't run for five years, you're going to find it pretty tough. Whereas if you if you practice and you build up slowly and you, 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 you know, you, you, you train properly, then when it comes to the day, the 10K race, you know that you can do it, you can complete it. So that's where the biofeedback set comes in. It's a it's a way that you can make time to practice this stuff intentionally. You can monitor yourself. You can see yourself developing over time. Um, and the tech also, of course, then helps to build a, a habit. So you form this habit of practice. Like if you were to go to the gym regularly, you would have a habit of practice and you'd feel a bit bad if you didn't you know, go for a week or so. The technology can be useful in that regard as well. Okay, brilliant. And I guess I, I think on even on the website, they talk about how this system really in from a very broad perspective is also helping cultivate resilience yeah. uh, you know i i delivered a webinar quite recently on the concept of resilience and i spoke and again HeartMath have articles on this i know where i kind of describe it as the resiliency um quadrant you know we don't just have mm. the physical resilience but there's the emotional mental and spiritual as well and yeah. what you said there the heart math system helps us regulate and also helps us, I guess for the best way of putting it, cultivate a more emotionally resilient system, yeah. but also to some degree, physical, mental, and spiritual as well, because they're all interconnected at the end of the day. Well, they are, they're all totally interconnected and coherence as a state, basically what's happening to you, one of the things that's happening to you is your autonomic nervous system goes into balance. And that promotes homeostasis. So on the physical side, you are promoting, you know, balance and you're promoting repair and revitalization, which stress interferes with, obviously. So the, the physical bit there is, is the coherence practice. The coherence practice also uh, enables you to regulate your emotions. So you can choose every now and again, the gratitude, appreciation, love, etc. And the more you practice it, the easier it becomes to do that on demand. Mm. That then facilitates, you know, more logical, rational creative empathetic thinking so on the mental side the prefrontal cortex becomes more online and you yeah you, you're much more in control of your thoughts and therefore your behaviors 
And yeah, I think on the spiritual side, that with that is something that unfolds with that heart connection as well. The more you nurture that connection to the heart of who you really are and begin to live and act more from the heart than just the head. Um it yeah, it facilitates your 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 unfolding spiritually. Um, or you know, if you don't like the word spiritual, then you know, just kind of like identity, purpose, that type of thing, values, etc. Yeah, that's a beautiful summary of of how it's all interconnected. Thank you. <laughs> Um, so with that in mind, I guess a question that might be coming up for our listeners is, um, we've discussed and sort of described briefly the, the tech, um, and you've shown us what that kind of looks like and how it works of being attached to the ear and picking up and sensing our heart rhythms. Um, are you able to give a kind of an example of the, in the moment sort of exercises that can be done? Yeah, sure. Well, let's, let's, let's do a quick one together. Well, we'll do two actually so at the, at the simplest level with heart math it all begins with uh, the heart focus and the breath work so imagine that you're in a, a a stressful situation it could be a you know a meeting where things are getting a bit tense or it could be you're, you're running late for something or it could be yeah, a difficult conversation it doesn't really matter with any sort of stressful situation what's happening then of course is we're experiencing a stress reaction so the adrenaline's going off the heart rate's getting higher we're beginning to release some cortisol um, the brain is shunting to the stress centers and away from the prefrontal cortex. So we find it much harder to you know, think logically and rationally, creatively, et cetera. So the idea would be that you just need to notice you're getting stressed and everyone does. We'll never stop getting stressed. We don't, we don't want to actually, but we want to minimize unnecessary and unhelpful stress. And we want to minimize stress that actually doesn't require us to fight or run away or play dead, but stress that then requires us to engage in sort of, you know, sophisticated behaviours, um, you know, and kind of complex problem solving, which is really difficult when the amygdala is taking control and the prefrontal cortex is offline. So it all just starts with recognising I'm stressed right now. This is not a situation that requires me to fight or run away. So we just start with the breath work. So literally all we do is... You shift your attention or your awareness down into the sort of the heart or the chest area. So it's coming out of the head and the thoughts and just moving that awareness sort of is a bit of a distraction technique and it begins to dial down the, you know, the negative self-talk, etc. So you're moving your attention and awareness. Some people find that difficult, in which case just putting your hand on your chest can help be helpful, facilitate that. And then what you're doing is you're intentionally um, slowing down. Uh, deepening your breathing a bit not too deep we don't want to be uncomfortable but you're slowing the breathing down making it a bit deeper and then you're actually just imagining that the breath is flowing into and out of the heart or the chest area so you've got your focus there the breath nice smooth slow balanced breathing in breathing out we recommend say five seconds for the in breath five seconds for the out breath but if people find that uncomfortable they can speed it up or they can slow it down but ideally the breath is balanced as well as opposed to a longer out breath. And the purpose of the balancing is that that balances the autonomic nervous system and it puts the heart into this coherence pattern where it's creating these lovely oscillations, repeating oscillations. So that's the, the kind of first step. We also want to be breathing in and out through your nose. We want to make sure that the belly's nice and relaxed. So we just do that for 30 seconds if you, if you fancy. So it's just focusing the heart and then imagine the breath flowing in, flowing out through the heart of the chest, breathe through the nose, belly nice and relaxed. And, you know, if you're in your meeting or your traffic jam, you could just sit there with your eyes open, just doing this breathing. And then very quickly what will be happening, and if you were connected to our biofeedback technology, what you'd see is the heart rhythms would go into this lovely, smooth sinusoidal pattern. So if you keep doing that maybe i'll bring that to life i'll just share a an image on the screen um okay let me share this one there we go okay so basically when you're stressed what would be happening to your autonomic nervous system is it would go out of balance and that would be reflected in your heart rhythm so your heart rhythms would look something like this where they're the, the heart rate is speeding up and slowing down erratically. Now, when you notice that, if you just start to practice breathing, very quickly you can shift your rhythms. So you're in conscious control through the breath. That's then reflected in the autonomic nervous system and the and the and the heart's rhythms. 
and you see this very different pattern emerge where if in effect what's happening here is the heart rate is speeding up and slowing down in this lovely ordered repeating pattern okay so you are see seeing there visually like balance within your autonomic nervous system so that reduces the stress it brings the heart rate down it, it begins to uh, stop the adrenaline and the cortisol production and that's really important but it's also really important with what happens next in the brain because when you're experiencing that stress the heart if you think of the heart as like the largest rhythm maker in the body if you're stressed and the heart's beating chaotically that's sort of reinforcing within the rest of the body and the brain a stress reaction so your your brain activity will be in the stress centers and unfortunately the activity the blood supply oxygen supply electrical activity that will have shunted from the, the prefrontal cortex so that's actually why we find it really hard to you know do or say the right thing we might say something stupid or do something we, we regret when we're stressed we've basically got a bit of a lobotomy thing going on good news is if you just recognize that shift initially through the breathing then we change the nature of the communication to the body and the brain and in effect what happens is the brain perceives well order stability i must be safe i don't need the stress reaction anymore and so i can get the prefrontal cortex back online again so, that, so that's basically where it starts. And then what you can do once the prefrontal cortex is back online, then you've, you've got more of a chance of being able to change your emotional state. So that first step technique is just called heart-focused breathing. We like simple names in heart math. You're just focusing in your heart and you know breathing nice and smooth and balanced. Additional step to that, which turns it into what we call a quick coherence technique, is shifting the emotion. So... I'll invite you and, and anyone who's, who's watching and listening, just recall something or someone for which you feel like genuine care, appreciation, gratitude, love. It really doesn't matter what it is. It could be a person or a place or a memory. I'm lucky enough as I sit here to be looking at a lovely blue sky and some leaves still on some trees and some lovely colours. So it could just be that you put your attention on something if you can't think of a person or a memory or whatever. And then what we're doing once we've we've connected with that, which we're going to breathe that feeling of the gratitude, appreciation, care or love, just breathe that in and out with the with the breath as well. So again, we just do that for 20 seconds or so, just feel the feeling, breathe the breath. Okay, so what will be happening then, if you're connected to the feeling, is in addition to what the breath was doing, which is balancing the autonomic nervous system, bringing the prefrontal cortex online, we're then beginning to shift um, the hormones within the body as well. So when we experience stress, we're getting you know cortisol and other stress hormones. <clears throat> when we shift and we begin to focus on pleasant feelings and emotions, we get very different types of um, hormones and biochemicals. So... For example, we would get DHEA, which is a vitality hormone. When we begin to experience those pleasant emotions and feelings, that's great. We all need DHEA. It literally, you know, rebuilds and revitalizes us. And if you were really able to connect to a sort of a, a love or a care or a compassion, you'd probably also start to release oxytocin, which is very useful to have in your system because it helps to buffer the stress response as well. And it makes us want to be sort of pro-social and be around others and be caring towards others. So, you know, really simple techniques it's breathing and it's go to your happy place but actually the impact of doing that is incredibly powerful and profound and if you make that a habit of practice then what you're doing is you're reducing like the unnecessary un unhelpful stress that we have in life the stuff that we're anxious about and worry about that we can't even control you know um we're reducing the negative impact of that and then by choosing positive emotions more frequently we're benefiting our hormonal levels as well. So we're reducing that unnecessary cortisol in the system that can, as we know, you know, wreak havoc over longer periods of time. We're making sure that we're, 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 we're decreasing the ratio of cortisol and we're getting, you know, good, good levels of the stuff that really helps us feel good and does us good, like the, the DHEA and the 
oxytocin and other you know feel good do good hormones mm, brilliant and i imagine that the vast majority of people who have just done that exercise uh like myself you know you feel something you feel better you feel things shift even in that incredibly short time period yeah and i think so many of us without wanting to make a too broader generalized assumption um you know we struggle to to do those things for ourselves everyone's so busy with so many commitments but having those little i describe pit stops throughout the day where you can just come to that heart focused breathing and you can consciously cultivate some of those positive emotions mm. and as you say it has a profound impact on our physiology and psychology as well it does and there's you know there's a huge body of research around these types of techniques i mean not just heart math but you know breath work and, and, and emotional self-regulation as a whole um you know the whole field of positive psychology we know that this stuff is extremely beneficial and the big challenge really is is not doing it doing it in and of itself is easy we've just done it the big challenge is is making it a habit of practice but if we do, we know it can have profound impacts. And we know, for example, that it can even increase the amount of heart rate variability that people have got. Heart rate variability is, is, is a, is a well-recognized measure of, of health, resilience. Um, and we, we need adequate levels of it. And we know that when people practice these techniques, um, that they can actually increase their amount of HRV if it's been low for some time, you know, compromised, and which it normally is when you have health problems. So, yeah, we should never underestimate that sometimes these very simple techniques can be, you know, incredibly beneficial. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And as you said earlier, the, the practice of these techniques means that we get better and better at, um, at creating that kind of coherent state, I guess. Yeah, it, it, like exercise, it, it builds the muscle, the ability to do that. It begins to, you know, hardwire the ability in as well so that more and more you remember to do it more quickly. So and it, it's not magic. It does take practice. Mm. Uh, but the more you practice, the more likely you are to then develop your self-awareness around your state. So you're more likely to recognize when you're stressed and anxious and therefore be able to do something about it. So we're just trying to kind of like decrease the window of that unnecessary stress and anxiety. You're not, you're not going to get rid of it, like I said, and stress is an important form of information and stress can help us to perform. But so much of the stress that we all experience in our lives is unnecessary and unhelpful. And so, yeah, the techniques to practice, if you do it, you, 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 you have that muscle memory and you can do it when you need it. Um, and if you make a habit of practice every day so for me you know i'll use the techniques ad hoc like the one we just did if i'm feeling a bit tense or nervous about something i'll just do a 30 seconds here or two minutes there um but then when when i, I also do a 20 minute practice every day with the technology which is that's my sort of like going to the gym for it and, I, and that's how i really keep that muscle like the stamina if you like nice and strong so that i can do the other stuff and i remember to do the other stuff as and when throughout the day mm. I think a really important point there, especially for those struggling with kind of chronic health issues, whereby um, sometimes, and I would assert in my kind of clinical experience, often there can be a degree of chronic anxiety or chronic stress for a multitude of reasons, sometimes partly just related to the fact that someone's been struggling with their health issues for a long time and they're seeking answers and solutions. Um, is that idea of how brain function shifts. So, you know, that rational, logical part of the brain, as you said, sort of goes offline a little bit. Mm. Um, and then we can't make as helpful a decision potentially as we could if we were in a more coherent state. I think that's such a, such a powerful thing to be aware of, that, you know, what you've just kind of taken us through can actually help the thinking mind make better decisions that might actually help us achieve what we're trying to achieve, if that makes sense. Yeah, completely. I mean, we, well, we, we even have a technique for that, we have a technique called freeze frame, where you recognize that you're perceiving a situation through the lens of stress. So that could be you're perceiving, you know, your health problem through the lens of stress, which would be entirely understandable because no one wants to be ill, obviously, and it's, it's worrying. Um, or it could be another issue like, you know, financial problems or something like that. But the point of the technique is to recognize that that, 
that perception is not the only way to perceive the situation. There are other potentials. The problem with stress is it makes us, it forces us to become very sort of throwing it like black and white. And, it, you know, well, this is the situation. There is no other way of looking at it. Coherence practice, then, because it changes what's going on in the body and the brain and it opens the, you know, the prefrontal cortex up. When you practice those techniques and then re-engage with the issue, you do perceive things differently. You perceive that there are other options. There are different ways of viewing it. There are... Um, potentially other solutions available you know not that we would promise that through a simple technique but there are many different ways to view situations so um i'm sure people have heard of like a reframe you know in in, in kind of cbt terms a reframe is reframing the way that you view a situation because it's possible to do that and the nice thing about coherence is it puts you in a physiological state a psychological state where you can reframe when you're stressed, it's very difficult to reframe. Right. Mm. Yeah, I think that's fascinating um, and hopefully helpful to, to kind of really understand within that context. Mm. Um, is there anything else that you would like to share from, from a heart math sort of system perspective? Um, is there anything that we haven't yet kind of touched on from that perspective? Well, I think, yeah, more than the, you know, the connecting with the heart side of things. So, you know, coherence you could view sort of mechanically in terms of well it's about you know shifting your breathing we know that's powerful and and, and there are certainly you know benefits to that and i'd advise everybody to do a bit of coherence breath work every day um but that's missing really the heart of what heart math is about so heart math as an organization we we our mission is to help create a more heart-led world and our belief is that many of the problems in the world come from unfortunately a sort of disconnection with the heart and a sort of predominance of of the head and the brain um and our view is that when you connect the heart and the, and the head together that's when the, the greatest um attributes of, of humans come forth so if you think about humans at their best you know that's when we're being compassionate and caring it's when we're being brave it's when we're being passionate and enthusiastic it's not when we're being cold-hearted or you know just perceiving things through a, a sort of a logical lens only where we can make then um you know uncaring decisions perhaps so th that's where the emotion side of things and the, and the heart connection is really important because we do often many of us need to, to nourish that connection many of us because of the way that we're brought up and the way we're educated we used to being in head mode all of the time. Um, but that's that's not what being human is all about. You know, we are emotional creatures. And I, we would suggest, I would suggest that the more we connect with our hearts, the more we're likely to treat ourselves, you know, more compassionately and fairly, the more we're likely to treat each other more compassionate and fairly. We're less likely to make decisions that would harm others or, you know, harm ourselves, push ourselves, you know, in directions that aren't necessarily the, the heart of who we really are so yeah that's the kind of esoteric part of it it's not like we're a religion or anything like that all sorts of different um people religions practice heart math as well it's entirely you know, non-faith based um but it's an important part if you want to just go down the breath work and buy a feedback route that's fine and it will certainly do you good but for me it was the connecting with my heart that enabled me to sort of emerge out of a traumatic experience that I'd been through and to find a, a new life worth living, you know, and, 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 I, and I changed career and started doing this type of thing. But but also, you know, I'm very lucky in that I, you know, I've married again and I've got children and 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 so I have a, a I have a good life. Um, would have been quite easy to let that other experience sort of crush me and make me think that life was unfair and um, and that would have affected my health as well. So yeah, the heart connection piece can be empowering. Um, it could also be a little bit disorientating when you're going through the process. Yeah, I was going to ask. I'd say it's worthwhile. Yeah, I think so, absolutely. And I think it can be, it can be potentially, I guess, overwhelming. It can be scary when we've kind of closed down the heart, which I would yeah. say, for no, um, as far as I know, like no particular reason, but I think almost just from a society perspective, you know, some of the messages that we have growing up, especially as a man, that kind of the masculinity piece, um, we are generally taught to 
close the heart, I would say, to a degree. Yeah. Um, so opening up can feel, I think, a bit scary at times until we've reached a certain point where we are more comfortable and confident living from that place. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, but it's it's certainly one of the most powerful things that I think we can we can do. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. Brilliant. Um, Gavin, I think that's been really powerful. And I think that gives us and our customers, our, our listeners, a really good insight into what HeartMath is, some of the techniques, the idea behind the, the actual technology as well. Um, just to kind of conclude, is there anything else that you would just like to either emphasize or something we haven't yet shared? Well, no, I just suggest, you know, if you think this is interesting, then give it a go. Proofs in a pudding, you know, give it a go, but give it, try to give it a proper go, you know, do it a few times, try and, um, you know, nurture this connection with the heart, see what that feels like. Don't give up too easily if you struggle with it, because many people do, because we're, we're, we're not used, many of us, to that that heart connection. So give it a go. Um, I can try and make it easier for people. We've got a, a free program. So I'll, I'll send you the link and maybe you could pop it in the in the details. Yeah. But there's something called the Heart Math Experience, which is a, is like a 90 minute e program, 10 minute section. So people could work through it at their own pace. But um, it's a useful introduction to Heart Math in terms of the techniques and the science and stuff. So so that could be useful to people. Um and depending when people are watching this, but running up to the end of the year, we, we've got a 25% sale at the moment as well, just, just to the public. So if people are interested in the, the tech or they want to get one for Christmas, um, 25% sales on until 31st of December on the on the UK side only. Um, but yeah. yeah. Okay, that's good to know. I think it's a, a good Christmas present for someone maybe. Yeah, well, for yourself or for someone that you know stressed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Gavin, thank you so much for coming on and, and sharing all of that kind of knowledge and insights and your personal experiences. Um, I think it's going to be really helpful. And as I said at the beginning, is a key part of the healing process for many of us, I think. It is. And we know more and more that the autonomic nervous system is 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 key to that. So many people are out of balance. We know actually for long COVID as well, that autonomic dis dysregulation is one of the key problems with it. So the breath work, yeah, I've said it a million times already today, but it, it is, it's simple, but it's profoundly powerful. And we can retrain ourselves back into balance um, through doing that type of practice. It's free. You've got to breathe anyway, hey? So why not try to breathe coherently? <laughs> oh, <perfect. laughs> Thank you so much, Gavin. Pleasure. Thank you.